Good evening, and thank you for joining us tonight for our Village of Alsa committee meeting. Today is June 14th, 2021, and we'll call this meeting to order at 7.34 p.m. Can you call, call the rolls, please? Yes. Trustee Dalzell? Here. Trustee Juarez? Here. Trustee McLawhorn? Here. Trustee Murphy? Here. Trustee Navasparza? Here. Trustee Peretta? Here. Mayor Ryan? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Can you please join us for our Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have bid opening for 2020 to 2021 CDBG MFT Street Resurfacing Program. We received five bids today. Uh, let's start with the first one. The first one is from Lindahl Brothers, Inc., 622 East Green Street, Bensonville, Illinois, 60106. I'm going to check and see if they have the bid bond and check. I know it's a lot of letters too, but uh, for those we we tape all these meetings. <clears throat> this is actually the CDBG actually stands for the Community Development Block Grant. MFT is certainly our motor fuel tax. So this is for more, as the clerk said, more street resurfacing. Here, there is a uh, bid bond enclosed. There is no check. The total amount for this proposal is $562,000. I'm sorry, $562,144,040. That's 562144 dot four zero the next one we received from k5 construction corporation they are located at 999 Oakmont Plaza Drive, Suite 200 in Westmont, Illinois, Is a bid bond included? And their proposal is five hundred and twenty three thousand nine hundred and fifty eight dollars and sixty cents. That is five two three nine five eight point six zero. Our 
our next one we received was from Metro Max Contractors Inc. They are located at nine. They are located at nine five five zero five zero Sergio Drive, Suite one hundred, McCook, Illinois six zero five two five. There is a bid bond included. And their proposal is $746,573.15. That is 746573.15. Just to recap while we're doing this too, um, Public Works Superintendent Freder, uh this was for 117th Street. Okay. So 116th place, which flows into 117th, from Pulaski to Joe Alice. Okay, and then colon from 118th to 119th? 117th to 118th. 117th to 118th. And then um, Central Park. Where at again, Mike? Uh, between 123rd Street and Bank Drive. Between 123rd and Bank Drive. Does that include the guardrail that's over there too? Yes. Okay. Is it there, the M MWRD Creek is right next to it and stuff then too. So that should look great. Uh, it's, I know everybody wants to get their streets redone, but I know... Um, Obviously, those are ready. You and I had looked at 115th place. I know it's, it's pretty beat up, but we're going to be doing water main replacement with Danny, so we don't want to put down a new rug and have to take it up again then, too. So, okay. Thank you. Okay. Our fourth one was from Iroquois Paving Corporation, located at 1889 East U.S. Highway 24, Watsika, Illinois, 60970. They have included a bid bond. And their proposal is $516,497.70. That's 516-497.70. And we have one more. This is from Gallagher Asphalt, located at 18100 South Indiana Avenue in Thornton, Illinois, 60476. I do see a bid bond included. And their proposal amount is $565,716.15. That's 565716.15. And those are all the bids that I have, Mayor. Very good. Thank you. We'll start with our officer's report, starting with mine. <clears throat> First on the agenda this evening was a presentation by Terry Carr regarding a new business within the village of Alsip. Uh, Mr. Carr, you want to come up and address the board? Terry, we always ask, um, we record all of our meetings. If you can use one of those microphones, I appreciate it. I speak very loud. Okay.
Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor. My name is Terry Carr. I own a chain of restaurants called Steak and Egger. We've been in business since 1955 in the Cicero, Chicago, McCook, Summit locations right now. There are seven locations as we speak. Uh, we're trying to spin our business off into a gaming cafe business, uh, something a little bit different. We do gaming now, but uh, we're trying to go in a different direction and get out of the 100% food business and kind of 50-50 in the gaming and uh, the food business. The location we're looking at is uh, 5418 West 127th, which is in the PS Plaza. Um, it's in a strip mall. It was an old hair salon from what uh, the, I guess you'd say, leasing manager has told us at the time. We, I didn't even think it was ALSEP at the time when I went and looked. Everything was Crestwood around there, and then all of a sudden the guy says it's ALSEP from the leasing management, so I figured uh, good to know where I'm going. <laughs> We're looking to get uh, clientele from the age of 40 to 70. Liquor sales won't be tremendous, but you need a liquor license for a gaming license. Uh, just to give you a little background, one of our stores in Cicero, the municipality share for the gaming is $51,000 a year. So out of our little location, the gaming provides about $51,000 per year. Um, I'm going to name it after my mom who passed away a couple years ago. She was a big gambler, so we thought Cindy's Cafe would be the the name for it, and uh, you guys have any questions? I'm here to answer anything. What was the bi uh, restaurant business itself going to be? Would it still be st like an offshoot of Steak and Egg? Or? No, we're going to try to get into more like the deli sandwiches and light food. Uh, when COVID came, of course, every business took a hit. We took a huge hit, and I mean a, a huge hit. And just getting employees to come back, I mean, we were a 24-hour establishment. Uh, I'm sure 45 employees in my business. So we were 24 hours. We dropped down to 16 hours a day. We closed our whole night shift down mm -hmm. to uh, to satisfy our needs of having employees for the day shift. Uh, it, it would be a couple more years before we even open another steak and egg. I mean, I have three leases right now, two open, full-blown restaurants. Uh, our goal is to get to 10 restaurants as well. It's just right now, it's just there's there's no employees out there to to work at. Where the cafe would take four to five. Our restaurants take about 20 to 25 employees to, to staff them at 16 hours. And how much volume are you, are you looking to do? Do you have a performer or anything that you could present to the board? For gaming or for food? For food. So food, if we did about 100 to $120,000 a year, mm -hmm. I would be more than happy. So my motto is is for food and alcohol sales to, you know, to be 40 to 30, 30 to 40% of the total revenue out of the location, and then the rest to be the gaming. So, board, uh, I don't know if most of you are familiar with the location uh, Mr. Carr is looking at. Uh, 5418 is approximately, like, if everybody remembers, where, where O'Hara's hair salon used to be, like uh, just west of the uh, Country House restaurant. There's a little strip mall right there where Athen Euros is at and that kind of thing. That's where you're going, Terry, is on that, right? Okay. There's a there's a tobacco shop there on the corner, right? Okay. Do you know the square footage off the top of your head of the space? The leasing agent said it was 1,400 square feet. I don't think it's 1,400 square feet. I think it's a little bit smaller, but he said it measured. I don't know if they went to the outside wall, the outside wall. He said 1,400 square feet. I don't. It does. It looks smaller than that. No, I mean yeah. we're going to get our architect in there to make drawings and everything once we get to that process. But I, it's probably, from my experience, probably between 11 to 1,200 square feet. Will there be any sit down at all? There will be all take out. It'll be all take out. There'll be a little stand up bar, but no sitting down with waitresses and stuff like that. So, it, uh, Terry, we didn't have a, a floor plan or anything like that. So, if you went with the maximum of like six machines that are inside there, you're going to have obviously, I, certainly, you're serving food to your patrons that are in there. To the patrons, and I, you will get people that come in off of the street. I mean, it's just bound to happen if we have it at our other locations. You would think you wouldn't, but you do. And uh, the sales of the alcohol are usually to the patrons that are playing the, ga the right. gambling machines. Okay. And one more time, I was making a note. What was the name that you were going to call it? Cindy's Cafe. Cindy's? Okay. Um, 
is Terry. Then anybody else have any questions for Mr. Carr right now? Mm -hmm. Well, Terry, thanks for coming out and, a and asking about that. And uh, certainly we can um, I, we can put it back to the board at a board in a board scenario and so forth then too to be considered. Okay. All right. Thank you, and I appreciate everybody. Okay. Time. Have a good night. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, next on the agenda, we had a presentation from Tarp House regarding the, the water retention construction at 3843 West 128th Place. Um, how are you? Hey, Vic, how are you? Good evening, everybody. Thanks for your time. Uh, um, I know you guys probably got a busy uh, schedule and a lot of things that you guys need to take care of. So thank you again for uh, hearing us out. So um, we, um, um, as, as we were like last than a uh, year talking about this location that we purchased and started running our business out of ALSIP, uh, is that uh, uh, upgrades that we need to do in order to meet code, which was uh, paving the place putting water retention, um, uh, lighting, and a bunch of other stuff in order to make, thing, uh, make things look nice. Uh, when we discussed it last year, it was supposed to be roughly around a million with all the upgrades that we were supposed to do on the whole place. Um, but lately, if you guys, I mean, you guys, you guys know that everything as far as um, uh, pricing have gone up, and we still haven't got the final approvals from the MWRD in order to bring the uh, place up to code. Uh, back and forward, we were working with the, um, our general contractor, Jim Wainer from Wainer Enterprises, which have done a uh, uh, few projects in ALSIP. So we went back and forward with him, with the engineer, uh, to work uh, um, uh, on this place and just to, to make it look uh, uh, the way we want it to look. Um, in order, um, when, we find, uh, when we finally got to an agreement, it was to build a above ground water retention and uh, an underground water retention uh, for the, the uh, underground for the north end of the property and the above ground for the south end of the property. Uh, originally, we were thinking about putting one above ground on the north end, but it just wasn't enough for the whole water to go all the way up to that north end in order to detain it. Uh, so we had to go through the more expensive um, option. So um, right now, we are at 1.7. Uh, million as of two uh, months ago in order to bring that uh, place um, um, uh, the way we want it to be. Uh, unfortunately, we got turned down from the MWRD that uh, the way we are building it right now, uh, it's eight feet of, uh, underground is where the water table is, and that's where we wanted to set the underground detention. Uh, MWRD says we need to go two feet above the water line which will actually uh, make that underground detention a lot wider in order to meet the code. Um, so right now we are still working with the engineer and the uh, uh, general contractor, Mr. Weiner, in order to get that uh, issue taken care of and uh, get the final approval from the MWRD. Uh, unfortunately, we, with all of that going back and forth, we don't know how long it will take to get uh, the final approval, and we don't know how much would that cost. Uh, that 1.7 was roughly two months ago, uh, which the <coughs> prices are now even <coughs> higher than it already was, and we're expecting it to be even higher than that because uh, that underground detention is going to be a lot bigger. Um, so that's where we're at right so now. So if, if I would, uh, I want to surmise this as well, too. So just give everybody a picture. First off, the property we're talking about, um, uh, Victor's company, Tarp House, was originally an also business. A year ago, you purchased Pro Trailer. Pro Trailer, this property that, they, that Victor owns is 3843 West 128th Place. Uh, this is actually right behind, it's just south of the... Um, American Scrapyard, that's on 127th Street there, and he's just east of Pulaski. You wouldn't, even, you can't even see this property back there because he's surrounded by companies on Pulaski, and you're, you're set back behind those. And on the south of you is like quality snack foods and so forth, and over off 131st Street. Uh, south is the JS parking, east is JAS is right there, uh, right? West is uh, uh, also Truck Center, 
Uh, then, yeah, north is the scrapyard. Right. So Victor came in last week with his contractor, Jim Wainer. Jim uh, built recently built quality um, pressure wash. You know, he was the contractor on that. Mr. Wainer is a reputable contractor. He came in, met with myself, Roger Early, our building commissioner, and explained the six and a half, the biggest thing here, and, and I understand, but the six and a half acres that Victor has to improve to b bring up the code, we gave him a year to get that done. In the meantime, MWRD still isn't really done with their engineering, but at the same time, this past January, and this goes for all their properties, you used to be able to bring your, your water retention down eight feet down, and that's kind of like where your table's at. Now they're asking everybody to bring that only six feet down, and what they want what they want Victor's company to do is actually elevate the property. You're actually bringing your property up six and a half acres, which is huge. I mean, it, 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 Mr. Weiner was explaining the cost of materials right now, we all know what a premium everything is at this point. As Victor said, he was just under a million dollars to improve this thing. That number just went from just under a million to $1.7 million now. And there's also some issues, too, where the point I was trying to make about MWRD, the water retention, whatever the calculation is, let's just say whatever they used to be a year ago, 10 years ago, as of January, they doubled the water retention. So now you got to have even a bigger lot. But that doesn't make sense. Is that what Mr. Weiner was telling us? What, uh, what I'm saying, though, is that you wouldn't have to elevate the entire property if you're going to excavate the property to get to an eight-foot depth. You I, just have to create a berm two right, foot in, in addition right. around the perimeter. Right. I'm just saying this is over six and a half acres, uh, and I'm saying the capacity, they doubled the capacity of what they used to, so you need a bigger, more retention is what they're asking but, for. But the addition of a berm around the perimeter has got to be less expensive than excavating eight foot. Is it still be a, uh, Victor? It is maybe Roger. Maybe you know too. Does it is it stay at six or are we still at eight? They as of January first, they did double the water retention. What they're looking to do, or what they're looking for him to do, is elevate it six feet at one end to lower to the. To the east end of the property, so it, it would it would basically pitch from west to east, with the water retention being on on the east end. Or I'm sorry, because of the topology of the property. Correct. Okay. So I I didn't I, I was making okay I'm bringing up the whole thing I I understand what you're saying. Yeah, you're, right. One end is is going to be higher than the other. Right. And it's going to uh, not swale but pitch directly right. to to the water retention. And Victor, is, is MWD signed off on this yet or no? no they, not yet. they have it's, not. Yeah, they okay. came back with the improvements that we need to make. Right. So our engineer and uh, Mr. Weiner are still working on it in order to get that done. So Victor's ask is that we we extend his ability to to uh, meet this need. What he's looking for is an extension of a year. I don't see an issue with it. He's been very diligent. He's been upfront and honest with us. He has a reputable uh, architect who's diligently working with MWRD. It's just <coughs> right now he's he's caught in a perfect storm in which he is having to expel more money and he's not getting an approval from MWRD. If they've changed the rules midstream, then it would only seem proper that you would do that. Right. Yeah, I mean, we, it's not like we uh, focused only on the, that improvements and we stopped there. Uh, we did remodeled inside. I mean, that place was like, like the previous owner was just given up on it for, for a few years or so. So that, that place is remodeled inside. The roof is fixed. There is a, uh, 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 electri uh, ele uh, electric gate uh, on the entrance. So it's a big difference that we made. And we didn't just kind of like focus on the improvements that we need to do in order to meet code. We did improvements to, you know, to make for us and our employees feel better. We recently, we... Um we recently sold your property that we were in possession of in order to accommodate that electric gate that you have put in then to power gate, right? What was that, I'm sorry? We sold you pro a little bit of easement to, to put that electric gate in, correct? Yes. Yeah. Just I'm just letting the board know we've been working together with you on different projects here. And Mr. Weiner's been handling all this yet, too. So as Roger said, he's a reputable contractor and so forth then, too. So, Roger, do you think six months is reasonable, nine months? I would say at least give him a year. I think he's going to need it. He's yep. he's got two two fifty four inch uh, sewers that he has to deal with. 
which is one of the reasons why he has to raise the one side up and pitch it because the sewers are underneath. So his retention, he can't go as as deep beyond those 54. And he can only go, it's literally two, the 54 inch sewers are two foot above grade. So they don't have a lot to deal with. So that's why they have to force all that water into the retention. But he has to get through MWRD and I don't see that happening within the next three to six months. So realistically, even if he get, gets it, if he gets We're it in the winter, then right, yeah. he can't Asphalt construct companies anyway, are closed. So, and so um, board, that'll be the ask next week is for a year's extension to do this and stuff then too. And um, I know you're chipping away at it. Are you doing anything else in the meantime? Anything else in the meantime? Electrical, you know, lighting, things like that? Or? Uh, well, we're talking <coughs> about, I mean, do everything at once. Uh, if we do the uh, lighting right now and... Uh, Put the asphalt afterwards. I mean, things are. Uh, it's it's like we gotta do first the detention, then the asphalt lighting. You know, the islands, then the um, uh, what was it? The uh, fire hydrants and all that stuff. Uh, I'll talk with the uh, with Wayner to see if we can put lighting. I mean, we would love it. I'm just saying, are we chipping away at yeah. something that we, rather we, way? We didn't know what the um, uh, what's first, what's second, what's last. If we can get the lighting to, to, to do it like before we do the detention and all that, we would love it. I mean, even for us, we would love to put... put I would, no, I would just pick it on one topic. But like you said, I think fire prevention is even more important now, too. So, uh, okay. Well, I, I'll put, well, I'll put it on the agenda next week for you, Victor, for the asking the board to give you a one-year extension on that, okay? All right. Thank you. I know it's a big, it's big investment. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda, head number three was a presentation by NICOR. Next site regarding a three-year engagement for market analysis, development, recruitment, and of new retail businesses for the village of Alsip. And we've got uh, Pat. Um, is it Pat? Is it Eves? Pat Eves? Eves. Thank you. Pat Eves and Nick. Are right. Thank you. And you folks are with NICOR, Nick. Yeah, right? we were both with NICOR. <laughs> okay. Our partnership is with Next Site. Well, first, thank you, Mayor, Clerk, Trustees, uh, for having us come to do a presentation. Thank uh, you. So to, to kind of backtrack a little bit, Icor Gas, uh, we realize well, we are we want to be partners within the community, and we understand the importance of economic development within our communities. Uh, so at the end of uh, 2020, we entered a partnership with NextSite, which is a, a data analytics firm that uh, works with our parent company, Southern Company, that helps municipalities such as Alsip to uh, realize their economic development. Uh, Pat Eve should have just gave you a, uh, a presentation. I'll walk through that real quick, if you. Sure. <clears throat> so, and I am on the first slide. So I'm going to go through quick. If you stop me, if you've got any questions. Uh, next site, uh, they've done more than uh, 500 projects, have helped communities realize more than uh, two, uh, 23 million square feet of uh, commercial uh, space within the, the areas that they've helped, uh, realizing a capital investment of somewhere around $4.7 billion. Uh, <clears throat> this firm is a data analytics firm, like that's what I said, that does research, uh, market analysis, uh, support development and redevelopment, market retention and recruitment. And uh, what's different from other firms is that they actually uh, stay with you until the end for results. So they're not a firm like the uh, most other site selection firms that just come in, just do market analytics, and then leave. They stay with you to the process until an actual business opens. Now, uh, they actively go out and shop whatever sites that you have available for uh, for occupancy for whatever uh, commercial development there. So what they do is uh, what is called uh, customer journey analytics. So they look at uh, what spots within your community that are the hot spots and then see where those customers go after that. So case in point, uh, they'll look at, uh, say, the Coca-Cola site, uh, where which is one of your largest uh, 
employers or even uh, the golf course to see where your customers go after that to see if there is any synergies of where they can help developers kind of uh, identify what businesses should be attracted to uh, to the area. So, and then from what they do, they kind of, and I'm on page, and I'm moving pretty quick. So I'm on page seven right now. What they do, they look at a trade area. So they don't look at just the community itself. It looks outside the community. Look, They look for a, uh, they first look at the 10 mile cycle uh, drive time and then a 30 mile drive time and whatever trains are around to see where exactly these customers are actually going and where they're coming from so that they can come here or uh, to make sure that whatever they're, that they're kind of eliminating some of the leakage that is uh, coming from the, the community. So again, they look at the, the retail trade area to see exactly what individuals need. If it's, uh, and this is an, an example of they did for Albertville, uh, Alabama, uh, just kind of looked at the, the, the actual overall market, uh, the school enrollment, the family structure, ownership, population, and even the age as well. <laughs> And then from there, they, they take it to the, the market analytics to see who is actually that customer base, so which is important for any end users so they, that they know, one, the number of rooftops and uh, the population in there so they can make sure that the demographic within, within the area is where they really want to uh, kind of be at. Any questions so far? If I'm moving quick. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so the one thing different about uh, Next Site is that uh, again, they'll help you identify sites, and if you have sites, they'll look at those sites and uh, kind of and market those sites with for you after uh, that data analytics and customer journey has actually been done. Uh, the benefit with this also, again, is that they represent uh, one NICOR and it can represent uh, ALSIP at any of the uh, the trade conferences, so the International Council of Shopping Centers. So anywhere where there's a, a high population of individuals looking to uh, do development with across the, the state, they, they work with those individuals as well. So, Nick, I've been to the deal-making show down, downtown yep. uh, a couple years in a row. Uh, they haven't had it, obviously, with the COVID last season. And um, I've actually went with a um, – we used to have an economic development consultant, mm -hmm. and they were really knowledgeable of it. And you're right, that's a major show, too. They're, they're – it's three days, actually, two or three days of developers down there. And we were fortunate to um, attract, um, I think we had 7-Eleven uh, is where I met them. And they just built a 4,000-square-foot 7-Eleven out here uh, last, just this year. Um, it's a good program, but you're saying that so that next site will represent the village yes. at the deal-making show. Yes. Okay. So they'll bring their they'll partner you with that, with that developer, and then you all make the deals from there. Yeah, so, I mean, I've gone there with footprints and so forth, and I was yep. introduced to a lot of people. I, I, I did a lot of my own introductions yet, too, but there's uh, communities from all over Illinois there and so forth then, too. But it's it's a great show, and certainly I appreciate what you're telling me, that they're going to represent us instead of us having to do the same. Yeah, and all. then, so it's even in Chicago, and then it's the Vegas one at the end of the year, too. So uh, and what any other developer focus uh uh, conference that they have, they represent there too. But is, that's you know what we do is that we help. We because of our partnership with Nike, with, uh, with Next Site, we bring them to you. You all negotiate whatever contract that is. So we have our benefit is of seeing helping you realize whatever economic development uh, that you want. Uh, <clears throat> so on page 15 is a, a, a number of the developers that they have uh, contacts with. So once you have a site, they uh, reach out to uh, developers that they know, and they again they talk to the developers at the uh, at these conferences as well. Uh, just as a as an aside, uh, since our partnership, uh, Next Site already has uh, agreements with uh, Sugar Grove, uh, Byron, uh, Berkeley, and with uh, Quincy, Illinois. So in our uh, territory, and they actually have the same kind of. Uh, a partnership agreement with Amron, who is the, the second largest uh, gas, our competitor. Well, not really our competitor, but they do gas in uh, portions of Illinois as well. <coughs> so again, in the other pages, uh, on page 
17, it kind of shows you what they've, they've been able to help attract. So they, in some cases, people need uh, socks. So if you need to find somewhere, uh, a, a business that sells uh, these general merchandise items, they help you uh, find those businesses and bring them to you. you know, some people may have uh, a cup of coffee that goes outside of the community. So they help you partner with those developers and help you bring that uh, information or bring that, those businesses to the community as well. The rest are the other success stories that they've had. I could take any questions at this time. Uh, just to let you know also that through our partnership, we've written down 50% of the costs for uh, next site. So what would normally be a, a partnership for somewhere around $50,000 a year to maybe upwards of 75 through our partnership agreement with them, uh, communities only pay, uh, depending on size, a maximum of 25000 per year. But again, you get them throughout the whole process. They don't just... Uh, do the data analytics and then walk away. They do the data analytics to help you uh, realize actual economic development from there. Nick, I don't have my packet jumping up at me right now. We, huh? we put these online, but as far as um, business retention mm -hmm. goes, say, for instance, I sent this to the board in, in their packet, but uh, basically there's stipends that are paid <coughs> to, first off, the, the engagement is $10,000 a year is what we were told. Yep for the next three years. So it's a $30,000 investment overall. Yep. And then um, for, uh, obviously, for the work that's being done, I did see the time frame. Um, let me get this up real quick. But uh, basically, it, you folks, uh, you have a time frame that once you engage with the village, first you're doing an overall, if, if you can tell everybody about that too, you're doing an overall um, plan, yep. correct? So what? So that's next site. So oh, it's the partnership with Nextsite. Okay. So with Nextsite, we again Nextsite does the uh, the overall uh, again data analytics and the 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 study for the full city to see what you okay. can do. Okay. So maybe a better way of saying that is you're saying NICOR is endorsing this program. Yes. Okay. I see. Nextsite would answer that, but. Yeah. Okay, I think for a lot of folks, because we do YouTube all these meetings, and, so, and the cameras are faced on us. They're not okay. looking at you. So. <laughs> and there's one up in the ceiling here, basically. You see the back so, of my so, head. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, nice haircut, Nick. Yeah, you know, you. So, uh, anyway, uh, no, it basically we uh, it's a ten thousand dollar year um, agreement, and you pay a stipend back to them for what they help you. Um, bring into your community. So it, let's say they bring in a, a 10,000 square foot strip center. It's worth, uh, let's say, $6,000 to them. That kind of thing. Too. It wasn't crazy numbers. I, I won't go through it in, in, in the open right now. But uh, I think more importantly is uh, Next Site is the one that's doing all the engagement. But on the NICOR side, NICOR, if again, just if you want to bring that back in then too, what how does NICOR play a part of this again? So the we, we benefit by uh, the new meters coming on and the new businesses within your community. More business to NICOR. That's, that's how we benefit. Gotcha. Okay. That's the best way of saying it. That's how you, why you're partnering with somebody. <laughs> yeah. is it means more business for you folks at the same time then, too. Okay. It's from a regional approach as well. It's not only that, you know, NICOR gas benefit from, you know, the spinning meter. Of course, that's always a good thing for us. But we know that economic growth in the region is always a good thing. We understand that. We understand that, you know, families from COVID and even before COVID, we understand that there's a struggle there. There are needs that are out there that need to be met. And we, with our partnership with the next site, that's exactly how we are saying that we understand exactly from regional, from ALSUB, from Crestwood, from, where, from our entire footprint, we're understanding exactly how to move forward in order to help that economic growth. It's, it's, a, great, it's a great attitude to have by, by NICOR because you really haven't heard the utility companies getting involved too much. Right? But at the end of the day, you're right. These are investments that are being made. You know, it's not just for your benefit; it's for the benefit of everybody, obviously. So, um, the board, did anybody have any questions? No. Just did one one question. So you're saying it's ten thousand dollars per year, thirty thousand dollars, and then it's based off of whatever they bring in, and that's determined by square footage or 
pro forma or, or it's revenue? Type right. of business. Or it's actually on page 23. Let me, um, I'll, I'll bring this up real quick here. Here, do you want mine? Oh, yeah, thank you. This is what we had in our package. Mm -hmm. here. So. Okay, I see it. So in the in the packet. That it's on page 43 of the packet. Okay, so what they had was, again, for the benefit of the public, even as far as retail recruitment was concerned, um, the most imp the most important service they, they they provide, and again, I'm speaking now about NextSite, is uh, proactively re proactively recruiting developers and tenant reps to position in a, the identified target opportunity list of retailers and restaurants. Um, they identify retailers and developers looking to aggressively expand their market presence regionally and nationally. Uh, they obviously next site understands the parameters set by the real retailers uh, when reviewing potential new locations. Uh, they have a roster of developers who are looking to, to replicate previous developments in similar communities across uh, southeast. Next site meets with with these uh, retailers and developers in a variety of settings, office visits, site visits, uh, as Nick said, uh, you know, conventions. Um, retail live uh, are, are important to communities to engage in conversation. Retailers, uh, tenant reps, and developers have told uh, NextSite that post-conference meetings and calls are the most productive use of their time, and, are pref and they prefer to uh, and they preferred the the way to discuss opportunities and share information. So there's a whole list of obviously everything from uh, we've, which we've got all these here, but they do work with Publix and Chick Fil A and Popeyes, you name it. All the all the big, not to mention hotels. There's you know Hampton Inns and so forth in here. So even okay, look at Quick Trip. Mm -hmm. Quick Trip. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say that? Yeah, so, we heard uh, it. So anyway, you know, Dunkin' Donuts, you name it. But yes, uh, this is a, a full engagement with all of these popular retailers. And as Trustee Murphy just said, or Trustee um, McLaurin was just saying that, here it is right now. So in consideration of next site's agreement to significantly reduce the initial investment, the client will pay success, or they, what's known as success fees to next site um, per the schedule below on, on all commercial development uh, recruited, completed, Incomplete. I'm sorry. During the agreed the ag agreement that we have with them, so it's my point being again was restaurants, um, sit down, fast, casual, and so forth. Six thousand dollars per location if they bring one into town. Single and multi-tenant developments like strip centers, ten thousand square feet um, is worth ten thousand dollars. Again, you're spending ten thousand dollars, but look, you're bringing in a strip center. Uh, multi-tenant developments uh, with uh, or a single retailer anywhere from 10,000 um, square feet and up is um, $17,000 yet too. So I mean the, the fees are, are justified and so forth yet too but these aren't crazy where we're paying like $100,000 for something like this and you could be doing it multiple times depending on what they what their what their success is let's put it that way. Exactly. It's just based off how marketable the city is and how uh, their relationship with the developers and what those developers are looking looking for at that time. Right. Uh, again, so our partnership with Next Site is to help uh, decrease that initial offset of costs, uh, okay. so that you all don't have to come out of pocket. We know that during these COVID times, the budgets are are what they are. They're, mm -hmm. they're hard. So, but if we can help you realize more economic development to, to see you get sales tax, property taxes. Uh, uh, income taxes, uh, all of that through this this partnership, then we we hope that it, we definitely want to make sure that it works. I appreciate it, uh, uh, Nick. And I've sp I've spoke with Pat before on on the phone, but I said I participated in a um, like a Zoom meeting with with your office not too long ago, and he had a bunch of he had folks from both NICOR and Next Site that were on there then too. So I appreciate the reach. That you, you had made to municipalities. Can I ask you? That's the one note I made on here. Um, 
I know the engagement is you're introducing next site you folks are endorsing next site and so forth but um, I know a lot of the towns that they showed in the in the literature were all like in you know southern you know states and so forth anybody local around here like I know you said you're engaging with Quincy right now but so anybody we, else closer to us and stuff? so no one closer to you all right now okay. but we are still in active conversations uh, to get agreements with uh, communities within the area okay you know, we, we know that uh, South sub the south suburb needs development. Do we need economic development out here? So, anybody, any other utility companies doing that? They know like ComEd and so forth yet too, or not? I'm not sure. Okay. I know that Amron is the only person that is engaged in Next Site on this type of partnership. Who is Nick? Uh, Amron. Okay. I just had some comments, um, if I may. Um, I noticed a list of the retailers that you have are national chains. And, for example, Burger King, we have one in Alsip. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts, I believe we have three. Uh, DQ, Taco Bell, the Quick Trip um, that was presented to the board. And also Ross. And I know the footprint for Ross, I just Googled it. It was roughly approximately 24,000 to 30,000 square feet. So even if we wanted a major retailer, where would we put it? So, and also we can't ignore our surrounding neighbors, such as Crestwood and also Glon, where we've seen the development happening in Oak Lawn, and they, in essence, the TJ Maxx store closed down in Crestwood. And I'm guessing they opened up shop down the street in, in Oak Lawn as well. So, uh, just to the board, I, that's just the comment that I would just um, want to highlight, and also the example of you know what other municipalities nearby have also utilized this service. Uh, so, thank you, Mayor, for asking that. Um, I'd also be interested to know if you know if any other municipality within proximity of us has also used this service as well. Again, right now we're just, uh, we've had general meetings with a number of municipalities and then they're taking it back to their board to see where their engagement is and if that it is possible. The one thing that we have seen is that a number of the municipalities have said that they may, they cannot potentially do it now because of budget constraints. So that's the, the one thing that we've heard. However, uh, again, because we've written down the cost, it's on depending on how you finance it it's you know that's the and even the, everything else is negotiable with next site as well so you can work those uh, the actual numbers at the end with the, with them uh, as it relates to uh, the footprint if you've got sites that you currently own or you got sites that you want to actively market with uh, landowners those are the sites that you kind of bring together and have uh, next site do those uh, the customer journey and the data analytics on so that they can find out again what's the need now you bring up uh, the TJ Maxx, the, the Dunkin' Donuts, the, uh, the Burger King. So if they look at it and they see that there is no need for another Dunkin' Donuts, another TJ Maxx, but there is a need for something else or someone else wants to come into this market, then they should be able to identify who those, or their developers should be able to identify who those end users are. And they can, again, they can give you information uh, based off of their analytics on uh, potentially why TJ Maxx went to, uh, what do you say, uh, Oak Lawn? Mm -hmm. You can, they could probably give you that kind of, uh, that data analytics. They actually, uh, were working with, uh, a furniture store in Quincy who, uh, they realized, I have to think that you were on a call when he said this, uh, a mayor, is that, uh, one of the, the, the made the, the, the furniture store in Quincy, uh, they did the data analytics for, the customers and he realized that all of the customers that left his store went to another store and uh, based off of uh, what how big his store was he realized that he needed to expand to uh, a different kind of uh, items within his store in order to keep those customers in his store so though you know again that's you know when you look at it from the standpoint of business re uh, retention you know and expansion that's the one benefit that this uh, partnership can have as well Thank you. Mm -hmm. Like I said, Nick, I think the thing that stood out for me anyway was a major utility company uh, vouching for or sticking their neck out for a, a, um, a another company like this, a uh, economic development source is uh, is huge, you know, to to do that kind of thing. So I appreciate you, you folks coming out tonight uh, to give us an overview of this, and um, certainly it's nothing that we need to. Uh, kickstart tomorrow, but definitely I wanted to start the conversation with this then too. Like you said, we're actually doing our budgets right now as well then too, and um, certainly we can talk about if we can incorporate that then too. And uh, I've I've got your contact inf information as well. But um, anybody else have any questions? 
then thanks again nick Th pat thanks for coming out tonight too i appreciate it thank, thank you, you. Uh, thank you uh, next on the agenda um i just wanted to introduce uh kim lovely kim if you want to come up kim is our new um economic development intern uh kim's been with us what, about, about a month and a half about seven weeks or so now kim uh, yes uh, okay yeah good evening everyone i just wanted to put a face with uh the name of the interns been working here i'm in my second year uh, at the university of illinois in the masters of uh, urban planning and policy and i can tell you the assignments that joyce and becky have been giving me implement everything that I've been learning and things that I never expected. Every day there's, there's something different. Things are uh, going off my desk somewhat quickly, so I'm working on time management. And I'll just list off a couple of the projects you all have probably gotten in your packages during your, uh, during your meetings. I'm sure you got the uh, census information uh, package. I'm working on uh, streetlight research. I'm also working on an in-depth survey to hear the voices of the, of the citizens of this community. That is something that I'm very passionate about, and it's front and center in everything that I do. May, uh, excuse me real quick, Kim. Uh, many of the thing, topics that Kim's talking about, uh, everyone will see this tomorrow in your emails, uh, too. So I, I, I consolidate everything. I didn't know you were going to be available this evening. I was going to go through all this, but I'm glad you're here. You can speak directly to everybody on it and something, too. But um, I want to give everyone a, an update on what you've been working on. That's what Kim's doing here. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Also, I've been really looking at the 2013 Comprehensive Plan. That is, la that is the last time that uh, the Village of Alsep has had that plan. So just looking at what has been implemented from that plan and how do we go forward to getting it redone oh, redone again. And actually just listening to um, the speakers that were just here, having an updated comprehensive plan is probably going to overlap with a lot of the information that they're, uh, they're going to be uh, providing with the analytics firm. A lot of that information would probably be in, in the comp plan. Also, too, I drafted a letter for the uh, Canadian and Kansas Railroad merger. I'm sure that the board got a package with uh, images of all the railroad crossings and uh, all of that extensive research. My angle on that letter was having this village having a voice in the process. Even though they're going to do what they're going to do <laughs> at the end of the day, but we still need to be at the table responding to what they plan on doing. So that letter probably went out uh, Friday. And the, like I said, the uh, comprehensive surveys will also be going out. And it's just so important to have the community's input on everything that we do, whether it be in business, uh, possible developments, um, as I said, that, that is front and center. And uh, when the data comes back from the surveys, we will definitely hear them loud and clear. And uh, other than that, I'm glad that I finally met everyone. <laughs> and uh, just want to thank you all for this opportunity. And I will be uh, talking to you soon. Can, can I say thank it once? You. I just want to real quick uh, express to everyone what that survey. I'm, you're going to see this in the packet. I'm going to send you tomorrow. That. Um, Give me one second. Uh, the survey that Kim drafted. We're going to send this. Here it is. Um, this is a, a sample survey uh, questionnaire that we'd like to extend. Um, we're going to, Kim. We're going to do this to House of Presidents. We're going to send this to everybody. Um, if one. Uh, basically, these everything's going to be sent back to us on a scale of one to ten, with one being poor, ten being excellent. How would you rate the overall quality of life in the village of Alsip today? Um, next is which of the following best describes your quality of life in the village of also hit I'm sorry which of the following best describes how your quality of life in the village of also has changed in the past five years one being much better two not somewhat three better no change four number four rather would be uh, somewhat worse and number five being much worse now 
But I don't know why you put that one in there, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> so then, um, yeah, really, you, you know, you couldn't have softened that thing a little bit, could you? Yeah, you know. So uh, number three, which uh, of these aspects of the Village of Alston businesses and community have contributed to improving your quality of life? Uh, parks and parks or recreation centers. Uh, number two is business. Uh, I'm sorry, bus services. Number three, schools. Number four, farmers market, senior citizen center, library, low crime, places to eat. Uh, next question, number four, are you having issues with the lack of no street lights near your business or home? Yes or no. Number next, number five, are you having issues with the lack of no sidewalks? near your business or home. Next question, which of, the, which of these aspects of the Village of Alsip community and business have contributed to decreasing your quality of life? Cost of housing, uh, next is neighborhood traffic, uh, commuter tra traffic, increased taxes, increased noise, increased development, lack of senior citizens. Next question, are there one or more places or structures or features in the village of also businesses area business areas that you value and would like to see stay the same if yes describe below next question are there one or more areas in the village of also that you would not want to show out of town guests if so please let us know you know that kind of thing so it's a uh, and then there's some other um, questions too uh, as far as um, how often do you um, buy a uh, basic goods like groceries and what how often do you go out to restaurants um, how often do you use professional services like uh, dentists and doctors and financial help within the community uh, how often do you make a large expenditure items such as appliances and furniture or cars uh, specialty retail um, goods and services like juries and luxury items uh, the next one was entertainment movies and theater and so forth so uh, we want to find out how many times per month do you do it in Alsip how many times per month do you do it outside of Alsip? And the location is your uh, location is your shop outside. In other words, where are you going if you're not shopping here, Kim? Correct. So um, no, this is this is all good stuff. And uh, the last uh, questions on here was, is there a business or com or community the village of Alsip should pattern itself after? Yes or no? And if so, which community are you identifying with? Uh, next question was the Village of Alsip Economic Development attracts warehouse distribution and light manufacturing. Do you feel this type of development should continue to be encouraged? Next question, do you want to see more places to have dinners with your family uh, versus fast food like McDonald's or Taco Bell and so forth? And last question, what type of new housing would you, would you like to see built in the Village of Alsip? You know, single family apartments and so forth then too. Kim, it's funny you brought up the, the comprehensive plan. I was here half the day yesterday, and I brushed up on that again myself. And I mean, sometimes when it's real quiet, you can really get into that and stuff then, too. One thing I want to make a note of, and you and I meet every week here, too, but um, th that comprehensive plan was actually modeled after Pulaski. So when we go to do the update on that, we got to really encompass the entire community, not just Pulaski. That, they were paid through a TIF over there, and that's why it kind of identifies just with that. And when you were talking about housing, and it did say in there too that they felt that the consultant at the time felt it was very important we're kind of landlocked with single family homes and they said whenever one comes out it's always important to replace that with a, a detached uh, single family home but they are they were encouraging more multifamily homes like more townhomes and stuff because they're saying the consolidation of that uh, square footage and all that kind of stuff many folks don't need that and one of the things I've mentioned on the board before and I, and I met with one of our attorneys last week I got to get all the numbers together before I present this to the board, but I think once we re, um, uh, basically once we move, let's say we're talking about moving public work and water to another location, location. So once we repurpose that garage as a police garage, it opens up our parking lot more. So, so between what the, we have in a parking lot here and the and the uh, elementary school across the street. The few times a year that we have get-togethers, like festivals for any type, we can kind of do them here. And I'd like to, I'd like to uh, sell off that Mulberry Ridge property down the street. That you know that that was a townhouse uh, property that really hasn't been utilized to its full expectation. And I feel if we brought in more families and increased our not only um, 
obviously bringing in families. We increased the real estate, the real estate sale, the real estate taxes and whatnot to the village, but we also accommodate more families in the community too. And I was told the reason that that property possibly that, that whole um, subdivision didn't do better. Those are only two bedroom um, townhomes, and they I've had developers I've brought in. They all encourage three bedroom townhomes. I don't even know if they have basements in those either. So maybe they a developer looks at it and decides what what sells best. We can approach that bridge when we come to it. But right now, uh, Vince Kankar is looking at um, homeowner association um, complexities and stuff like that. There's a lot of caveats we need to get through and stuff then first. We can't just flip a switch tomorrow, but I'm looking at that right now then too. Okay. Go ahead, Mary Grace. Jeff, sorry. Um, so how will this be mailed to our residents? Yes. Uh, will it be accessible otherwise, like online? We, we probably could. You know, we could, it, it's... That's, that's fine. I'm sure Becky and I would use our typical, like our newsletter mailing list. Mm -hmm. But as you said, that, that gets, that's a little more direct. And Kim, this is Mary Grace Snooks, uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, Director. Okay. So, um, yeah, no, great suggestion. And we're happy to do that as well. Do anything to simplify the process. But I, I like the, the um, I, I, uh, Kim and I met uh, on Thursday, and I told her, or Friday, whatever, and I, that's how much I really liked the idea. We didn't do go overboard, but these are good questions that we can help. Uh, for summary, and should we engage with any of these economic development consultants, we got even more that we can share. What, get to the point without having them do the, that, duplicate the same work. Let's put it that way. So, but uh, Kim, Kim, thanks for coming out tonight too. Like I said, I know you work part time with this, but I didn't want to encroach your schedule. But I really appreciate you being out tonight, then too. So I'll move forward with the rest of the meeting. Uh, next, we had the clerk's report. Clerk Harding. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I have the presentation of the April 2021 FOIA report, the presentation of the May 2021 FOIA report, presentation of the May 2021 IDOT motor fuel tax allotment in the amount of $62,987.66, presentation of the May 24th, 2021 committing, committee meeting minutes, presentation of the May 24th, 2021 special board meeting minutes and the presentation of the June 7th, 2021 board meeting minutes. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. We have a public forum. Did anyone wish to address the board tonight? Nobody? Mary Grace, did you want to address the board tonight? No. Okay. Just, just asking you where you have one of the few had it from. Um, Next, any committee reports, uh, finance and IT, Trustee McLaurin. All right, uh, next week I will have the usual list of payroll and accounts payable for approval. Um, also within the budget packet for tonight, Joyce has provided information um, specifically. She is asking for approval of the phone system upgrade at a cost of $60,000 and um, a fire suppression system for the server room we are drastically lacking um, on fire suppression for the server room and could be in big trouble if we don't get that upgraded and the cost of that is twenty thousand dollars and that's all I have okay thank you uh, next we have the fire committee report trustee Murphy um, I just have an update in regards to the uh, new hire for the fire department uh, they have initiated background checks for a candidate, and that's all I have, sir. Trustee, I, I know you and I were in on an uh, email today with the fire chief. Uh, one of our guys that was out uh, sick or hurt is back to work now, too? Yes. Okay. Already? Uh, next, we have the police and traffic safety. Trustee Delzal. We have the presentation of the police department May 2021 activity report. Uh, a request for the approval to promote James Kelly to fill the vacant sergeant position. Vacancy was created with the retirement of Scott Zablotny. The promotion with the board approval would take place on June 21st at 7.30, the regular board meeting by the Fire and Police Commission. That's all I have, Mayor. Very good, thank you. Um, 
I shared a text message today. I just asked uh, Chief Miller, we're going to recognize um, Officer Wilder next week then too, Chief? Yes, sir, we are. Okay. So next week for um, life-saving effort, um, Trust Delzell for um, Officer Wilder. Yeah. Kind of a surprise. Yeah. I know it's a public forum, but she doesn't know it's coming. Oh, okay. So well. we did invite her family. Uh, they'll be uh, unbeknownst to her, so it'll be a surprise. Excellent. Don't okay. let her watch this. Does she watch? <laughs> she doesn't watch the station, <laughs> does she? You know? her, I will restrict her viewing capabilities. Very good. All right. <laughs> can we uh, can we go back to the finance thing since we weren't here sure. for the presentation? Since we're going to be talking about the uh, phone system and the uh, fire suppression sure. systems. Uh, are you looking for the approval of that next week? Yes. Okay. It, was there bids let out for this? No, this is just approval to start to move forward. I'm Rick, our Rick, Bob Ricker is working on uh, the RFP for the phone system right now. Okay. We have the fire suppression is under the threshold. Okay, so we're, we're looking at letting the RFP next week, not acquisition of equipment. Correct. Okay. So right. that, that would be the question, uh, Joyce, would next week on the agenda. That I'll work with you on the language, but it would be like request to um, go out to RFP for uh, phone system replacement. Well, wouldn't it be prudent for the fire suppression as well, as we're looking at 20 grand? Exactly, right. There's two pieces to that. Um, the fire, the suppression for the... Uh, server room. Server room is, I want to say, 15,000. Right. And the server that's up in the finance area, that suppression is 3500 It's two separate right. projects. But, well, but shouldn't we be looking at it as a single project to maybe we can. make the scope we can. more beneficial for competition-wise? We I can. I mean, that's what we were looking at with the asphalt projects and yes. on and on. Consolidate them. And I, as a project, I would think that it would be beneficial for that purpose. I think we're probably going to be presenting quotes as opposed to an RFP, though. Um, I stretched it at 20000 just to make sure we were covered. So I think we can bring back three quotes, and I think we should be okay. And those quotes are going to be obtained. I mean, it, it just seems to me that if we do a better job of advertising on our website or, um, you know, I, I would... I've been a strong advocate of a reverse bidding project. Um, I think that it seems that we're really inefficient with the RFPs, RFQs, SMLs, agree with you. XYZs. Mm -hmm. So, so you would like to see what? I'd like to see a play. Like to. You want to see it advertised yeah. adequately. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Again, Chief, I, pro I apologize about I didn't know that was a surprise either, so okay. don't let Officer Wilder watch the station, okay? <laughs> so, um, all right. Anything else, Trustee Dozo? No, thank okay. you. Uh, next, we have the uh, Public Work and Boat Launch Trustee Juarez. I have a presentation of the Public Works Department May 2021 monthly activity report and request for approval from the board to purchase one SCAG Cheetah 2 ready mower from Russo 21660 South LaGrange Road, Frankfort, Illinois, in the amount not to exceed $10,933. That's all, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Frater, can I ask, is this a ride, uh, like a big tractor for a ten grand, or what? You get the pictures in the. Yeah. Oh, I didn't so see it. It's a rider. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Here. Yeah. Oh, very nice. It's one, is that one of those zero radius things and yes. stuff too? Okay, okay. I didn't see it. I'm, I'm a paper guy, man. <laughs> Chopping down trees over here, you know. Um, um, Mike, do you have a timeline of when the 122nd Street railroad tracks will be done? I believe within the next few days. They said a total of five to eight days it was going to be closed. So they started that last Wednesday, I believe. So I would assume in the next couple of days it should be over. Okay. Uh, next, we have the uh, sewer and water. Trustee Navas Barza. Thank you. I have a discussion of the recommendation to award the contract for the replacement of water mains to the low bidder H. Linden and Sons Sewer and Water Inc. in the amount of $2,765,240.00. And I also have discussion of filing the Illinois Public Water Supply Loan Program 
loan application in the amount of two million six hundred thousand dollars and zero cents and that's all i have so i want to go back then you want to speak to this danny and i talked about this that we qualified for a two point six million dollar loan but the quote came in uh, about one hundred and seventy thousand dollars higher than that so what what did you want to do dan you want to scale the job back to two point six we can certainly do that um, if we didn't want to use capital funds to make up the balance there's areas of the project that we can scale back cut back on to you know bring it under 2.6 Joyce do we have the ability to do the the hundred seventy thousand dollars over um, the water department's going to actually be receiving a little over a million dollars from the um, ARP funding the stimulus money okay so there's plenty to cover an additional cost there if if Dan would like I think that answers it then you want you want to stay with what you what you propose then like I said it, it's if we don't do it now we're gonna eventually do it at some point so sure. you know that's why it's in the project you know to get done you know if there was you know concern you know beyond the one point you know whatever million she's talking about obviously we still have capital funds available you know and I believe we would have you know been able to cover that hundred seventy five thousand dollars anyway that's fine so then next week why don't we just go with approval of as you just said and um we'll get this going and stuff we're doing that this year right correct okay that's what we're looking to do is when dan and i were talking <laughs> and for any reason we went back out to bid we only had a single bid that was the hard part we had nothing to gauge against and so forth and if we went back out to bid and because of the loan is a 30-day um application period yet too we're going to blow the season this this will fall into winter before we're doing it we don't want to do that we want to get it done this fall right so and yes the the project was advertised for you know the bids were advertised for 30 days instead of the an, an, you know usual 10 days so there's plenty of you know information out there i just think some of the contractors may have you know committed to other projects and weren't available we did have three people pick up you know two of the you know um, contractors did not submit bids our engineer uh basically approximated this job at 2.55 million and it came in at 2.76 so it's two hundred thousand dollars higher 220 higher than we thought yep. but um, again we had nothing to gauge against and it was a fair uh, RFP and Dan you said he's got everything in this thing yet too not, nothing more so we, we're not paying for any fluff or anything like that correct now that you know in speaking with the engineer you know he thought and the reason he raised his engineering estimate was because of you know materials price fluctuations you know the the price of pipe has gone up significantly so Dan and if I were we do go out to bid again you know to try and get more bids it's very likely it could go up you know because of the market flux you know flux in, in on Dan, pricing right and Dan and I were looking at the idea we did spec it with eight inch pipe and we were looking to possibly go back to six, but you know, as long as we're covered, Dan, we'll just stay at the eight and stuff. Was there much of a difference between using six and eight? It, we're still working on those discussions. I, I think we just leave it alone as long as we're okay with what we're doing them too. Uh, yeah, obviously, you want to have as much capacity as possible and stuff if you could. Certainly. So. All right. Any questions, trustees? Yeah, I, I hate to uh, do a pop quiz, but what's the status of our Jawa? Uh, the Southwest Water Agency. So. Southern water. I'll have something for you next week on that. Yeah, I actually just got a letter from them too, but I'll 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 give a scenario on that next week. I hope you so. made our second payment. That's all. I That's all. I was, yeah. Yeah. I, I saw the second payment go out, and I haven't heard anything since we've been sending them money. Yeah. And they have a real bad habit with things like that. No, I get it. I'll, I'll have a report for you next week. Thanks. Okay. <clears throat> anything else, Trustee? No, that was it. Okay. Building and Health, Trustee Prada. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have a request to approve the Knights of Columbus to solicit donations for their annual Tootsie Drive on September 17th and 18th, 2021, in support of intellectual disabilities at the corners of 115th and Cicero and 115th and Pulaski. All volunteers will be over 18 years old and will wear a yellow and red safety vest. And that's all I have, Mayor. Trustee Prada, I, just so you know, they did include, when they sent me the letter, they included like a heart love, the sister and all that. And we've confirmed before, Trustee Dalzell did, you know, those aren't our streets. Those are Oklahoma or Chicago. So these are the only two that really affected us. That's all. Okay. Okay. And, and we're still getting indemnification from these organizations? Yes. Okay. Uh, next, Human Resource and Insurance, Trustee Murphy. 
We have a discussion on the sexual harassment training update. And to date, we had 10 people taking the uh, exam, which is re required, the class, I should say, and two have completed it. This does not count for um, uh, elected officials that will be, again, like last year, it will be a separate training because it is uh, elected official uh, specific. So I did uh, have correspondence with Charles, and uh, he will be putting out uh, emails to all the employees reminding them uh, that this is mandatory and uh, needs to be done uh, before year's end. And that's all I have, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, we have the Special Committee Reports, Economic Development, Trustee Nava Sparza. Thank you. Uh, I have further discussion regarding the It's on Pulaski signage on Pulaski Road. And I actually wanted to remove this item, but I didn't meet the cutoff to remove the item from the agenda. Since I wanted to wait uh, to have further discussion, since I believe the Mayor's Office is exploring ways to kind of save the signage, so I wasn't sure if there was an update in regards to that, or we can wait till the next committee meeting once you receive an update. You know, um, Becky, my assistant Becky Smith, was uh, looking at some ideas. We haven't got a quote back uh, from the, the vendor yet, Beck. Um, I know I looked at the economic cost of the village, and we had run some numbers on Friday uh, based on the, some uh, numbers. Uh, what you're talking about is the signs on Pulaski. There's 16 signs, actually, that say it's on Pulaski. I put the information in everybody's packets for the, the branding and so forth then too. But we did come up with a number of, um, I got it right here. We spent, the village spent, I think, um, sorry, the village spent um, roughly $67,000 on between the on Pulaski and the directional signage uh, back right, like those marquee signs, we spent about $67,000 on that back in 2013. And um, we don't have anything yet as far as repurposing these yet, because I'd like to see them repurposed. We've spent too much money to take them. They're not even 10 years old. I mean, I really don't want to take these down yet, you know, but they're not. To me, they're not bothering me. If the board, this is only, that's just me, you know, but unless the board wants to have those taken down or repurposed is one thing, but um, I don't want to just take them down, you know, unless we have something else to put back up again then too, you know. So um, did, did you have any suggestions on, on what you think, given the basic, the design and everything else that's out there? Well, I know that those came as a result of uh, the 2013 Pulaski uh, Road Action Plan. And to uh, Ms. Lovely's point, um, you know, plans do need to be assessed and reevaluated to see if, you know, if there's something that we can be doing differently. Um, and I'm not sure if the business community feels that there might be a, a need for like a, an update on the corridor to reflect maybe some of the new businesses that are coming in or also to be, uh, better market the corridor. So it might be great to have a, a community input as well from the business community to see if they would be in favor or involve them in the process as well t in regards to like a rebranding strategy. So I would be in favor of, of having a plan in place and seeing what, what's the best way that we, if we wanted to hire a consultant again to re re suggest perhaps renderings or um, uh, maybe a banner or something, something low hanging that's like fruit, I guess to say, so it's not as, ex as expensive that we can update on a, um, maybe every two years or three years or something, instead of, you know, putting money into signage that is costly and it, you kind of feel bad taking it down and so mm -hmm. forth. So I, I'm willing to, you know, to have conversations and explore what that might look like. But I, I do think we, we should maybe could talk about to see if that's a good option right. or if it's not right now, but let's plan perhaps a year or two from now, where do we want to be? In, in the coming weeks, I know summertime is always kind of tough because that's where we scale back even some of our meetings too. But I am going to be calling for a town hall meeting uh, where we can invite everyone in here. And um, Becky is doing a great job. She's been talking with, uh, collaborating and talking with both our economic development intern and um, the Chamber of Commerce, Mary, Mary Grace Snooks is here this evening. And uh, I mentioned to the board a week or two ago that I was looking at an idea of possibly implementing what's going to be known as the um, ELSIP Community Improvement Committee. And we can bring this up at this town hall yet, too, to basically that 
committee it can be a collaboration of members of the industrial committee, village trustees, residents, chamber of commerce, and business owners, uh, where we can work together to elevate, recognize, and implement changes for the betterment of the Alsip community. Uh, we will divide the village up into z zones, designate a few members of the committee to each zone, uh, where they will research and evaluate what changes and improvements that need to be made. Uh, they will also reach out to the community within these zones uh, with surveys to get their opinions on changes, like you were just suggesting, uh, to see what they'd like to see. Uh, this committee will meet once, uh, we've we got to establish, I was going to say quarterly at least, uh, you had once a month there, Becky, which is fine too. I don't know if we if we can get that much attention, you know, get to get get the frequency, but we can look at that uh, to go over the findings and put together a plan of action and to resolve these issues. Then bring it back to the board and the mayor for their input and approval. Um, and what we're what we're saying to the community is, well, we feel you'd be a great asset to this community should you wish to participate as as a um, member of said committee. So we'll get this out. We can speak to the. Um, the you know the the village at large in a um, a town hall setting and see if folks are interested in doing that kind of thing then too and uh, we'll, Becky we'll look at a date coming up yet too like I said I know summer's kind of tough but you know, let's give it a few weeks and let's put that together okay okay thank you that's all I have all right oh actually um, one more update um, Mayor you and I were on a the Pulaski Road corridor study uh, Zoom call that was facilitated by, I believe, the Cook County Department of Transportation and Highways um, Plesky Corridor Study, Corridor Advisory Committee. So it's, forgive me, it's a, a, a long description. But I did step out of the meeting, uh, the Zoom meeting, a little bit earlier um, or than I expected. And I was able to um, sit in for the improvement alternatives on the Plesky Corridor, also specifically the corridor wide alternatives and localized alternatives. So I know they mentioned community input, so I'm not sure if they shared anything with you on the, so, the call. So what we did, the final questions on that was, um, just so everyone knows, they're gonna be re <coughs> uh, resurfacing and reconstructing Pulaski Road from 127th to 159th. Um, part of, uh, they had all the stakeholders, they started south and worked their way north. When they got to us, they actually uh, talked with us, uh, and, and Mary Grace, you were on the call as well too. And uh, thanks for your input as, to, as well, to our guys uh, for participating in that. But they were, I was telling Trustee Dalzell today that they, they were talking about when it got to the bridge over the Cal Sag, that they basically need to replace that bridge. So they're like, we could replace the bridge and put in just a straight new bridge with no trussle on top. If you felt it was in, in necessary or you know if it had any significance we can save the trestle slap it back on the new roadway just so you can still have it but it doesn't really serve a purpose otherwise they can leave the entire bridge there and work around it which I didn't care for and I think we all said the same thing because otherwise you'd have to like swerve basically it would go left and go right to get around this thing and so I'm like no just take it out and less is more and but this is really if my only request would be and, and Trustee and Ava Sparza brought this up too, is the lack of um, space for bicycles and, and pedestrians. Well, give, a, give us plenty of room. Give us a six footer if you have to, to get people across those bridges. If you got people coming out of Robbins, Middle Othian, whatever, trying to access like the bike paths and, and all stuff, yeah, too, because for the duration, you have to get through an industrial park to get to the bike path and stuff then too. So we made those and then they asked when they got down to, a, I explained the route that they would have to take um, because really there's no bicycle path from Blue Island from let's say like from Kesey to Cicero there's nothing there so you have to cut through 131st Street and we're doing our best way actually we're doing better with trying to get some money for that right now Mike you know, I don't know if you saw that recent email we're getting closer to getting our money to get 131st Street finally done pretty soon mm -hmm. but you have to take 131st from Kesey to Pulaski jog over north to 129th take that up to the flea market then go back south and you got to take that all the way up to Freedom Park at uh, 131st and Cicero to actually get back on the path again. So with all that going on, they says, hey, Mayor, do you really need a, a sidewalk or a path to go from 129 to 127th? This is absolutely. I says, there's a lot of money being spent over there between convenience stores, restaurants, and whatnot. So if you want to get off the path, even to use a restroom, you can get over and do that. They're like, okay, gotcha. And then they actually suggested, too, of taking and maybe making, um, connecting the bike path that goes behind Apollo Park and bringing that back, you know, down to Pulaski to tie all these in together and stuff. Then too, so there, there is, 
some communication. I'm talking sidewalk. They're not talking bike path. They're talking sidewalk, which would be great. My focus in this coming year, which I, there's a, a thousand things we can look at, I'd love to see more sidewalks, more transportation ability to get people east to west. We, we need a sidewalk at 115th between Pulaski and Cicero, and then some. We need a sidewalk, Trustee Elizabeth was reminding me today, from like the Heritage Apartments up to the McDonald's for crying out loud. You can't even get a cup of coffee on 119th Street and stuff. So we need to make improvements like that to keep things moving forward. And we really struggle with the idea that we just were limited with sidewalks. It seems silly, but we don't have enough sidewalks around there. But no, you didn't much miss much. We were just a summary at the end of that meeting. That's all. Okay. Yeah. And that's all I have. All right. Uh, then we'll village property. Trustee McLaurin. No report this evening, Mayor. Okay. Uh, ordinance legislation. Trustee Pareto. No report, Mayor. Trustee, I'm going to start sending you a couple of uh, situations that I've seen recently and some ordinances okay. for your committee to look at. I think we need updates some language. I met with Deputy Chief Schultz okay. uh, last week, and uh, we talked about a couple, uh, Sean, that you felt we should be updated and yep. stuff then, too. Okay. Uh, next plan and zoning, Trustee Juarez. Committee. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, presentation of a list of licenses dated May 24th, 2021 through June 4th of 2021. Okay. And that's all. Thank you. Did anyone have any presentations, petitions, or communications? Nobody? How about any un unfinished business? Any new business? All right. Okay. Motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. We'll adjourn this meeting at 9 o'clock. Thank you very much, folks, for your patience for coming out tonight. Good meeting. Thank you.